you do. Oh, All right, there, Rob. Oh, you know, someone need these right now? No, they get their own. Keep oh, okay. them. They're yours. You want, these? you want this or you want a shirt? Thanks, Sean. Okay, we have with us now the champion of the 133-pound weight class, Vito Arujo from Cornell. Hi. Vito, when you're comfortable, if you can give us some opening comments about your championship match. You know, uh, that was a doozy. Uh, partially because I'm still a little dizzy from that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I think I was, I was really... Uh, sluggish off the off the start, a little lackadaisical, um, and I think that maybe partially led to the early injury that I got. Um, you know, we both just bumped heads. I went through uh, quite quite some time there trying to close the uh, the gash at the top of my head, um, which you know kind of threw away the first period's like momentum for me. Uh, so you know, I didn't jump out to the one two takedown lead after the first that I'd really hope to but um you know i stayed resilient and through call and call and lost lost uh, takedown lost takedown i just kept my foot on the gas and said no i'm not gonna let this slip away from me so i slammed my foot down even further on the gas and continued to push until finally i found a takedown that the refs were comfortable with <laughs> all right uh give us your name and your affiliation let's go here on the front row okay. mike fifth with Vito, last year you beat Art Rome by Young, who was apparently they couldn't score on. You found a way to do it, just like tonight. Also, when the second takedown was down loud, what did you say to the official? Oh, when I was yelling at him? Yes. Oh, because I had the foot in bounds, and I looked at him, and he started counting as if he had awarded me the takedown. So he started counting, and I was like, I'm not going to give up a caution. So I exited the mat. But if I didn't get the takedown, he wouldn't have been allowed to start counting and gave me an opportunity to pull him back in for the finish of the shot. So I may have lost my temper and said, you can't do that, but <laughs> you can't. So I apologize to that referee for speaking out of terms. It was definitely a very emotional roller coaster, but yeah, that was the debacle that and we had. scored against a, on a guy who doesn't give up points like he did a year ago. Because Dave Fix does not give up about points in the score. No, he's very good. So how are you able to do it against these guys that do not give up points? Uh, just as Dayton's, you know, one of his best abilities is defense and really denying people those, those scoring opportunities. I say that my thing is getting to those offenses. Um, you know, I find holes, I create motion, action, uh, and I win those positions. And that's something that, you know, I think I do a very, very good job of. I think it's led me to the success I've had in every aspect of the, of the sport. Okay, let's go over here to the left. Ryan Holmes, Intermat. Vito. Obviously a very different match, very different year for you as a whole. Yeah. Not what you expected in the finals, a lot of roller coaster up and down. You said it was an emotional match. You even lost your composure, which we don't see most of the time when you're out on the mat. What did Coach Gray say to you? I saw him grab your face and kind of recenter you during one of the 10 stoppages. What did he say to you and how did you recenter and then get your offense moving again after the stoppage? He said, down and away. I said, okay. And then I was still mad, but I understood down and away. Um, me and Mike have a really good connection. Um, I trust him full heartedly. Uh, if he tells me down and away, I go down and away. If he tells me to shoot, I shoot. Um, I like it when he says to shoot more, uh, but I understand because I didn't know what the score was. I, I did get hit in the head a couple times. I wasn't necessarily thinking super straight, um, but yeah, he said down and away and I said, okay. So I think it was 15 seconds left. I think I, I think that was during the debacle of it was eight, eight, two or eight, five, I don't, know, I don't know what the score was, but yeah. Okay. I, I hope that answered the question. Yep. Yeah. You have another one here. I do. On the front row. Okay. You know, before you lose you, I have to know what your plans are for the Olympic trials. Um, you know, I, I two weeks ago I didn't know if I was going to wrestle here, so I, I'm currently taking it day by day and wondering, you know, what what I can do, what I'm capable of. This tournament helped me showed, helped show me what I was capable of, um, and now it's just whether or not what's in my best interest. Uh, I still very much, with all of my heart, would love to represent this country, the United States, in the 2024 Olympics, and that. Uh, and I am still sitting in the semifinals. Um, you know, we'll see how this 
clears up and if everything's good to go, I will be at all the trials. And your weight right now is? 133 pounds? No, I'm sorry, but can you get down with the- Oh, 125 pounds, 57 kilograms. Uh, yeah, I'll see what I can. I can do anything. <laughs> okay, let's have your name and affiliation. Let's go to the second row here. Hi, Patrick Lanny, NJ.com. Uh, ESPN clocked that match in 21 minutes. I'm curious <laughs> if that, where okay. that ranked in the longest bouts of your career and was the length, the stoppages, uh, the chaos of it all, did it affect 21? you? That's that's oh, according to the broadcast. I, was it, uh, did it affect, did it affect your Ever? wrestling? In the finals? Ever. Yes. <laughs> Got their money's worth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, yeah, I had a, I thought I had a really long match at EIWA. I had like a 12 minute match. I was like, wow, that was long. But yeah, that was a bit, uh, <laughs> that is everything that I am bad at. Stab, stops in motion, no momentum, able to be pulled, uh, you know, multiple stoppages for blood, just smacking my head. This is just <sighs> terrible. No, <laughs> I don't know if a single call went my way, but, um, just persevering, staying like staying in there, get your head down into the into the fight and just let it rip. I think that's what I did. And okay. just to follow up, were you were you frustrated with the officiating in the match? I I don't know a sane person that would be in my situation, but at the same time, right, I, the reaction time, everything. I I'm not mad at the refs, you know, whether or not it, it, you know, whatever. I was just frustrated in what was happening and the fact that you know uh yeah i may be a little dazed and i was losing a little bit more blood than i would have liked to um but ultimately you know uh diversity and we we, we challenge that okay let's go on the left side on the, in the back kyle Klingman with Flo. if you said you were not maybe ready after eiwas what did you do, do between then and now to get ready um, at EIWAs, I was still very much concerned with um, you know, my injuries. Uh, I, was, I was very much trying to limit contact with my head and my neck and my everything. And I was trying to like kind of wrestle but not really hurt myself, which, you know, just doesn't work. It doesn't work in the, in, in the level that I, that I wrestle at. Uh, I need to be able to, you know, put my body on the line. I have to, so I have to, uh, you know, ante up a certain amount, and that is, you know, everything. I have to, I have to put everything on the line in order to go out there and wrestle the way that I want to. Uh, so, um, you know, we noticed after AIWAs that, you know, I tried to be really careful and I didn't hurt myself at all. So uh, we got back and we're like, let's just see where we're at. So I had a really, really just grinder every day. I wrestled with Yanni for, uh, live a couple goes at practice, and, you know, I took some good hits to the head, and uh, to my surprise, you know, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. Um, and that gave me the confidence to kind of return to things that I was good at, you know, a lot of head motion, a lot of just getting in there and fighting. Uh, you know, <laughs> if I had watched this match just now two weeks ago, I'd be like, ah, there's no way I could do that. But, you know, um, through, and I've said, I've, I've gone on and said, said this before, through Cornell Wrestling and, and, and the support staff that we have there and just our alumni base and everyone, uh, in, in you know helping out uh, it was really uh, uh, it was, I was really have them to thanks for allowing me to uh, you know, come out here and wrestle today because you know the way it was going I, I, I wasn't sure but they they had uh, faith in me when when I did not okay we got time for two more questions the first one will be over here on the right Enzo Fano USA wrestling uh, I just want to know how cool it is that not just you but your Corey teamer is also going to be in the finals and you guys pretty much train in the same room since you were little. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited for Jacory uh, as well. You know, it's super, super cool to see, uh, you know, VHW. Uh, that's, that's the club that my dad runs. It's where I learned how to wrestle. It's where Jacory learned how to wrestle. Um, it's really cool to see that we've continued uh, to hone our crafts even after moving away to college and, and you know, taking on a new family of sorts. Um, just to know that we, we both have similar roots and similar, uh, you know, starts um and to see that we've both come a really long way is, is really uh heartwarming for me okay our last question will be over here on the left right on Zitterman. so you talked about a lot of the stoppages and how you didn't have confidence to really stick your head in there when we talked yesterday you 
bashed your head into him a ton of times, right? Like you blew straight through his face. He was blood, bleeding, head wrap, everything else. Talk about the confidence that you have in yourself going into a match like that and how it really grew as the time went on. I was really nervous before that match. Uh, I know everyone makes who's making jokes or whatever, like, oh, I think he's going to lose just because he has to. Like, No, he doesn't have to. He's a really good, really, really good opponent. Uh, if I didn't wrestle this big class, he would be the national champ. You know, no, no doubt in my mind. He's that good. Uh, you know, world medalist. Uh, he's been on the stage relevant for how many years now, right? So uh, I was very nervous. Uh, and then the whistle blew, and I started wrestling, and I forgot everything. Um, and then I ran up on him with my little crawl and we bashed heads and I'm like, oh, I'm bleeding now. So, um, you know, confidence, there was no confidence. There was no thinking. It was just wrestling. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure he knows that as well, that, you know, I, I, I have nothing but, but uh, admiration for Dayton and, and respect. Uh, so I, I bet he understands as well that it was, it was a dog fight because, you know, we both wanted to win. Okay, Vito, thank you very much. Thank you.